Hello, I'm David Hardesty, and in this lecture we look at the U.S. domestic tax rules for allocating and apportioning deductions between U.S. and foreign source business income. This is part one. The objectives of this lecture are to understand the following. The general U.S domestic tax rules for allocating and apportioning business deductions between U.S. source and foreign source business income, the special rules for allocating and apportioning interest expense to U.S. and foreign source income, and in general terms, the special rules relating to allocating and apportioning research and experimentation expenses and losses on sales of personal property other than inventory. Here's an overview of the rules. Non-resident aliens in foreign corporations are taxable on their business income in the United States only when it is effectively connected with the U.S. trade or business. This concept is discussed in the lecture on taxation of business income. Effectively connected income is gross income that is effectively connected with a U.S. trade or business less deductions apportioned and allocated to that income. A deduction not covered by a special allocation rule is allocated to a class of income to which it is definitely related. The allocation of deductions is covered later in this lecture. Then, if necessary, a deduction is apportioned within that class of income between statutory and residual groupings of income. Apportionment of deductions is covered in later in this lecture, lecture as well. Special rules apply to the following types of deductions, and we will be uh, covering these rules later in this lecture. Interest expense, research and experimentation expenses, loss on dispositions of personal property other than inventory. There are more special rules covering different types of deductions. These rules are set out in the regulations and are covered briefly in the text. We will not be covering these rules in this course, but you should be aware that they exist. These special rules relate to the following types of deductions. Stewardship and controlled services, that is, shareholder expenses, legal and accounting expenses, income taxes, net operating losses, personal exemptions, charitable contributions. Before discussing the allocation and apportionment of deductions, we must first address classes of gross income because under the scheme in the regulations, deductions are allocated to classes of income. A class of income to which a specific deduction may be definitely related can include one or more of the following classes or subdivisions thereof. Compensation for services, gross income derived from a business, gains derived from dealings in property, rents, royalties, dividends, interest, and distrib a distributive share of partnership income. Here's an example of a class of income. Foreign Corp is a country X corporation that operates retail stores in country X and the United States. Gross income generated from retail sales represents the class of income called gross income derived from a, from a business. Another concept we have to address before dealing with allocation and apportionment is statutory and residual groupings of income. 
The term statutory grouping means the gross income from a specific source or activity that must first be determined in order to arrive at taxable income from such specific activity or source under an operative section. One of the operative sections that gives rise to statutory groupings and which is of most concern in this lecture is effectively connected income. Gross income that is not attached to a statutory grouping of income is part of the residual grouping of income. Here's an example of statutory and residual groupings. Domestic Co. is a U.S. corporation doing business in country X. To determine the separate limitations for the foreign tax credit, its gross income within a specific and separate limitation category constitutes a statutory grouping of income, and all other income not within that separate limitation category, whether domestic or within a different separate limitation category, constitutes the residual grouping. Here's the basic rule for allocating a deduction to a class of income to which it is definitely If a deduction is not covered by a special rule, then it is allocated to a class of income to which it is definitely related. A deduction is definitely related to a class of gross income and therefore allocable to that class if it is incurred as a result of or incident to an activity or in connection with property from which such class of gross income is derived. Whether a deduction is definitely related is based on a factual relationship between the income and deduction. If a deduction does not bear a definite relationship to a class of gross income constituting less than all of gross income, then it is treated as definitely related and allocable to all the taxpayer's gross income. Here's an example of the allocation of income. Foreign Corp is a Country X corporation with retail stores in Country X and the United States. Expenses of the U.S. stores are definitely related to the gross income from a U.S. business which is a class of income, because the expenses are incurred in an activity from which this class of income is derived. Now let us consider apportionment of expenses. When a deduction is definitely related to a class of income, and that class includes gross income within both statutory and residual groupings, then the deduction must be apportioned between the statutory and residual groupings in a manner which reflects to a reasonably close extent the factual relationship between the deduction and the groupings of gross income. The regulations describe different ways of apportioning expenses including a comparison of units sold, assets used, gross income, direct costs, etc. See the regulations for a full list of metrics that might be used. A taxpayer can apportion deductions based on the comparison of assets that generate income within each grouping. This method of allocation is discussed later when we talk about allocating interest deductions. Note that Beginning in 2018, for the purpose of allocating interest expense, apportionment is based only on the tax basis of assets. Where deductions are not definitely related to any gross income, the deduction must be apportioned rateably between the statutory grouping of gross income and the residual grouping. The amount apportioned to each statutory grouping must be equal to the same proportion of the deduction which the amount of gross income in the statutory grouping bears to the total amount of gross income. Here's an example of the apportionment of expenses. 
Foreign Corp is a country X corporation with business operations in the United States and country X. It incurs management expenses related to retail operations carried on in both country X and the United States. It has $750,000 of U.S. sales and $500,000 of country X sales. It incurs $200,000 of management and administrative expenses that are definitely related, that is allocated to gross income from foreign and domestic sales. The statutory grouping to which deductions are apportioned in this example is effectively connected income. The books and records of Foreign Corp. do not enable the company to specifically allocate the $200,000 of expenses to foreign and domestic operations. Accordingly, the deductions are apportioned based on relative gross income and $120,000, $750,000 divided by $1,250,000 is apportioned to effectively connected income. Special rules apply to the apportionment of interest expense incurred by a foreign corporation engaged in business in the United States. Interest of a foreign corporation is apportioned to effectively connected income using a three-step process discussed in a later slide. Interest expense on non-recourse debt is allocated to income from property financed by that debt. Interest allocated and apportioned to effectively connected income cannot exceed the taxpayer's total interest for the year. Before discussing the regulations relating to the interest expense of foreign corporations, let us discuss their applicability. The rules in Regulation 1.882-5 provide the exclusive rules for the allocation of the interest expense of a foreign corporation. These rules supersede the regulations under Section 861 as to interest ex expense incurred by foreign corporations. If the foreign corporation is a resident of a country with a tax treaty with the United States, then interest is ordinarily deductible in determining profits attributable to a permanent establishment. The general rule for tax treaties is deductions are allocated to a permanent establishment using rules analogous to the transfer pricing rules. Because the regulations provide the exclusive rules for allocating interest of a foreign corporation, the regulations appear to supersede tax treaty rules. Whether the regulations do supersede treaty rules, however, is open to question as discussed in the text. Let us now examine the three-step process for allocating interest of a foreign corporation. The three-step method of allocating interest of a foreign corporation is known as the adjusted U.S. booked liabilities method. Under this method, the interest expense of a foreign corporation that is allocable to income that is effectively connected with the conduct of a U.S. trade or business is determined under the following three steps. Step one, calculate the value of U.S. assets. Then determine the amount of U.S. connected liabilities by multiplying U.S. assets times a fraction determined by dividing worldwide liabilities by worldwide assets. The result is U.S. connected liabilities. This method of calculating U.S. connected liabilities employs what is known as the actual ratio. An alternative is the fixed ratio, discussed later. Then, 
U.S. book liabilities are identified. These are liabilities recorded on the books of the U.S. business. These liabilities are compared to the U.S. connected liabilities calculated above, and the interest associated with the difference between the two liabilities is added to or subtracted from interest recorded on the books of the U.S. business. If U.S. connected liabilities is greater than U.S. booked liabilities, then the interest rate associated with the non-U.S. debt is applied to the difference and added to U.S. interest. If U.S. connected liabilities is less than U.S. booked liabilities, then the interest rate associated with U.S. debt is applied to the difference and subtracted from the U.S. interest. Note that the reduction of U.S. interest is referred to as scaling back. The elements of each step in this process are explained in the text. Here's an example of a three-step step process using the actual ratio. Foreign Corp is a country X corporation that actively conducts a real estate business in both country X and the United States. Its balance sheet for 2010 is as follows. Notice that asset 2 is the only U.S. asset. It has a value of $2,500. And liability 1 is the only liability recorded on the books of the U.S. business. This liability has a balance of $800. Step 1. Based on the table in the previous slide, we know that the value of U.S. assets is $2,500. Step 2. U.S. connected liabilities equals U.S. assets times the ratio derived by, by dividing total liabilities by total assets. Total liabilities of $4,000 divided by total assets of $10,000 gives us an actual ratio of 40%. This ratio times U.S. assets gives us U.S. connected liabilities of $1,000. Step three, in this step, we compare U.S. booked liabilities of $800 to U.S. connected liabilities of $1,000. Because the latter amount is $200 higher than the booked liabilities, we must add interest expense to the U.S. business. This amount is the excess connected U.S. liabilities. We determine the interest rate attributable to excess U.S. connected liabilities by dividing the non-U.S. interest expense paid or accrued by the average amount of U.S. dollar denominated liabilities that are not U.S. booked liabilities, which produces an interest rate of 8 percent. That is 256 divided by 3,200. Foreign Corp's interest expense allocable to the U.S. business is the interest on the excess U.S. connected liabilities of $16, 8% times 200, plus the interest on the booked liabilities of $56 for a total of $72. When U.S. connected liabilities is less than U.S. booked liabilities, the calculations are the same, except that the interest is subtracted from U.S. interest. The amount of subtracted interest is calculated by applying the rate on the U.S. debt to the difference. Assume that a, co uh, that a company in the... Uh, previous example goes through the three-step calculation uh, discussed in the immediately preceding slides 
and determines that its U.S. connected liabilities are $300 and its U.S. book liabilities total $400. The difference is $100. Also assume that its rate on non-U.S. debt is 8% and its rate on U.S. booked debt is 7%, 56 divided by 800. The 7% rate is applied to the difference and its U.S. debt is reduced by $7, that is 7% times 100. In lieu of using the actual ratio, a taxpayer can use a fixed ratio. As an alternative to using the calculated actual ratio to determine U.S. connected liabilities, a taxpayer can use a fixed ratio of 50%, uh, 95% if the taxpayer is a bank. Here's an example of the three-step process using a fixed ratio. Assume all of the facts of the previous example except that foreign corp elects to use a fixed ratio, which is 50% because foreign corp is not a bank. In this case, we change step two as follows. Total U.S. assets is multiplied by 50% fixed ratio to yield U.S. connected debt of $1,250. In step three, the excess U.S. connected debt is $450 and the Interest on that debt is $36, so the total interest allocated to the U.S. business using the fixed ratio is $92. This lecture is continued in Part 2, so please listen to Part 2 now.